So in my pre-debate analysis, if you watch that, you know, the one thing that I said, if I had any expectations, it was that I would probably expect to see Cory Booker replicate the success that Kamala Harris had last time at the first debate by going after Joe Biden's poor record. And with uh, Cory Booker, he worked on this criminal justice reform bill that was recently passed. You know, it's not comprehensive, but certainly a step in the right direction. And it was actually signed into law by Donald Trump. Um, so I would expect him to go after Joe Biden. And he did. And Joe Biden tried to get in some shots. And, you know, it, they were some good shots, right? But overall, uh, Cory Booker came and was ready to fight. And he absolutely won this fight. Take a look. This is a crisis in our country because we have treated issues of race and poverty, mental health and addiction with locking people up and not lifting them up. And Mr. Vice President has said that since the 1970s, every major crime bill, every crime bill, major and minor, has had his name on it. And sir, those are your words, not, not mine. And this is one of those instances where the house was set on fire and you claimed responsibility for those laws. And you can't just now come out with a plan to put out that fire. We have got to have far more bold action mm -hmm. on criminal justice reform, like having you, true Senator. marijuana justice which means Thank that we you, legalize Booker. it on a federal level Thank you, Senator and reinvest the profits in communities Thank you, that have been Booker. disproportionately targeted by Vice marijuana President Biden, enforcement. Vice President Biden, I want to give you a chance to respond. The fact is that the bills that the president, that the, excuse me, the future president here, that, that, that the senator is talking about are bills that were passed years ago and they're passed overwhelmingly. Since 2007, I, for example, tried to get the crack powder cocaine totally d disparity, totally eliminated. In 2007, you became mayor. And you had a police department that was, you went out and you hired Rudy Giuliani's guy. You en engaged in stop and frisk. You had 75% of those stops reviewed as illegal. You found yourself in the situation where three times as many African-American kids were caught in that chain and caught up. The Justice Department came after you for saying you were, you were engaging in behavior that was inappropriate. And then, in fact, uh, and nothing happened the entire time you were mayor. Thank you, Sen uh, Senator Booker, you wanna respond? Well, first of all, I'm grateful that he endorsed my presidency already, but I'll yeah. tell you this, it's no secret that I inherited a criminal, uh, a police department with massive problems and decades long challenges. But the head of the ACLU has already said, um, the head of the New Jersey ACLU, that I put forth national standard setting accountability. Mr. Time, Vice President, Mr. Vice President, I didn't interrupt you. Sorry, Please show me that respect, it. sir. We have, a system right now that's broken. And if you want to compare records, and frankly, I'm shocked that you do, uh, I am happy to do that. Because all of the problems that he is talking about that he created, I actually led the bill that got passed into law that reverses the damage that your bills, that you were, frankly, to correct you, Mr. Vice President, you were bragging, calling it the Biden crime bill up till thank, 2015. Thank you, Senator. Vice President Biden. Number one, the bill he talks about is a bill that, in my our administration, we passed. We passed that bill that you added on to. That's the bill, in mm -hmm. fact, you passed. And the fact of the matter is, secondly, the, there was nothing done for the entire eight years he was mayor. There was nothing done to deal with the police department that was corrupt. Why did you announce in the first day a zero tolerance policy of stop and frisk and hire Rudy Giuliani's guy in 2007 when I was trying to get rid of the crack cocaine. Uh, Mr. Vice President, there's a saying in my community, you're dipping into the Kool-Aid and you don't even know the flavor. Uh, you, need to, you need to come to the city of Newark and see the reforms that we put in place. The New Jersey head of the ACLU has said that I embraced reforms, not just in action, but in deed. Sir, you are trying to shift the view from what you created, there are people right now in prison for life for drug offenses because you stood up and used that tough on crime, phony rhetoric that got a lot of people elected, but destroyed communities like mine. This isn't about the past, sir. This is about the present right now. I believe in Thank redemption. You, I'm happy you evolved. I want to bring in but Secretary. But you offered no redemption to the people in wanna, prison right now. I want to bring life. in So that was absolutely brutal. Good on Cory Booker for going after Joe Biden here because there just isn't any amount of words that can really describe how much damage Joe Biden 
has done. His record on criminal justice is awful. And, you know, good on Cory Booker for calling out that phony rhetoric, because as he put it, it got a lot of people elected, but it ruined lives. And when Cory Booker said, look, if you want to compare records, and I'm surprised that you'd want to do that, let's do that. And then he just went through all of the things that Joe Biden did. That was great. That's exactly how you take down a front runner. You call them out for their poor record, and that's your moment to shine. Now, Cory Booker has a little bit of credibility here because he just got one of his criminal justice bills passed, signed into law by Donald Trump, of all people, and he pushed for this bill. It's not comprehensive, but nonetheless, it's a step in the right direction. So Cory Booker, I think, did a good job here at shining a light on the damage that Joe Biden caused. And Biden tried to get in a couple of shots at Cory Booker. But overall, I mean, to say that Cory Booker came out on top of this exchange is an understatement. Uh, the Kool-Aid line. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely love that. Um, I absolutely enjoyed watching Joe Biden fumble and then refer to Cory Booker as the president. I mean, you're basically saying... I'm not going to be the future president. He's going to be the future president. Like, what was that? That wasn't the only moment at the debate where Joe Biden was just weird. I mean, there was the Joe 3030 moment and whatnot. But these types of moments are absolutely important because when you have someone with the record that Joe Biden has, that is incredibly poor. Uh, you have to call it out. And later on in the debate, you know, Joe Biden talked about how Kirsten Gillibrand possibly changed her position on him because she called him out, you know, over a statement that he made about women's rights issues. Um, but Joe Biden called him out or excuse me, Cory Booker called out Joe Biden because he said, look, you were calling it the Joe Biden crime bill up until what, 2015, 2016? That's incredibly troubling to think that you in this age, in 2019, can be the standard bearer for the Democratic Party when you won't even atone for the horrible things that you've done? I mean, have you apologized to Anita Hill yet? Seems like he tried to apologize, but she didn't accept it. I wouldn't if I was her. Um, he only apologized for praising segregationists weeks after, you know, that event between him and Kamala Harris at the last debate, and it was after he started to take a noticeable hit in the polls. So Joe Biden is a fraud, and for the candidates who aren't going after him, this is a missed opportunity. You can take shots at the front runner. Everyone else is doing it. You're not going to come off as overly aggressive if you're each taking turns to, you know, dogpile on Joe Biden. This has to be done. His lead is huge. So, if any, anyone in this race is serious about actually winning, if we want to reshuffle the deck a little bit, then Joe Biden needs to drop out. You need to damage him because that's a lot of support. That's a huge chunk of voters that will then be distributed, you know, across the other candidates. I don't know where they're going to go, but certainly, you know, if you want to move up, then you all have a vested interest as candidates on that stage to go directly after Joe Biden, hit him, Hit him hard and hit him repeatedly. And that's what we saw during this debate. And this was probably my favorite moment in terms of people going after Joe Biden because Cory Booker just did such a phenomenal job. You could tell he was prepared. And look, throughout the debate, there were times where Cory Booker got on my nerves. You know, he seemed a little bit phony. But I think that this moment in part is largely the reason why, I, you know, he was a standout here. You can make the case that Cory Booker was one of the winners, if not the winner, Namely because of this moment. It was that good. So that was brutal. Great takedown by Cory Booker of Joe Biden. It was definitely warranted. Let's see if we see more movement, more decline in the polls when it comes to Joe Biden. I certainly hope so. You could support the Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast. Sad. <laughs>